Hi guys, Amber here. Welcome back to In Conversation with ATF. Now, I know I haven't done this for a while. I mean, we've been very busy and also because the sag after strikes have been going ahead. So not a lot of people have been able to come on my show and talk about a lot of things. But I suppose, does animation really count? I'm not entirely sure. I'm not a part of the union, so I can't really comment on it. Um, but just, just real quick, JB Blank. My guess is JB Blank today. Um, how, how has it been out on the picket line for you? If you've, have you been striking or? I have, yeah. So um, what people sort of don't understand sometimes is that the, the, the strikes are done per contract. Mm-hmm. So there is a, there's a TV theatrical contract with, with all the on-camera stuff. There's mm-hmm. a, an animation contract, there's a commercial contract, and there's an interactive contract. And so most of my work comes under the interactive contract. Uh-huh. Uh, and we may or may not be looking at the same sort of uh, industrial action soon uh, because of, you know, it's uh, we, we're facing the same problems that the theatrical people are. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, it's it's very interesting. You know, the, the, the usual games are being played where they, they come with silly offers and... Uh, do a big flourish in the press as though this is on the wga which is just negotiating right now the writers guild yeah um and it's kind of the same offer that they started with and so these strikes were in for the long haul i think and um it's it's very tough for a lot of people not just the people you know the actors but it's also all the production crew the IRC, the teamsters all the people who run run the studios do all the other stuff uh it's a big big slow period and and it's uh it's very tough but you know, studios are wanting to replace actors with AI. That is that is a, a hill that we're all prepared to die on. So we'll we'll strike as long as it takes because yeah. uh, it means the end of the industry, and when we can't yeah. have that. And and it's worth it, honestly, like because um people like me, newbies, who are just starting out in the industry. I've done a few voiceover things, and I am hoping to join the union and start USA work as soon as the strikes are have come to an end. Um, for now, I'm sort of focusing on getting a UK agent and just like starting out over here and then just like branching out because voiceover people say it's better if you have a UK and a US agent. Um, do you do you just have a, a US agent? I do now, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was very lucky because I was just in the right place at the right time. I came to town at the right time. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I hadn't really done any voiceover. I was I was a theatre actor in the UK. Mm-hmm. And then I did a movie called The Count of Monte Cristo and, and kind of um, the director after that sort of said, I think you should have a look at LA. I think you do well there. And I came over and, you know, it was slow. 9-11 happened as soon as I got here and that changed everything. Yeah. And then... Uh, a friend of mine said they were looking for British voices in a in a for an anime called Helsing, and um and I and uh, I auditioned and got a couple of parts in that, and so that was my kind of kickoff. Um, and then games were kind of hitting at the same time, and and I just I don't know I just seemed to have the right tools that they wanted. I I could do lots of different accents, um, and so it it kind of took off from there. But um, so I've never really had to expand to the i mean i'd like to have a, a uk agent that'd be great particularly as i've worked really hard to retain my accent and not become californian um, <laughs> i am an american citizen now but but i'm but ah. clinging on to my accent um so yeah no so i've, I've always only just had the uh, american representation for voiceover oh that's really cool wow let's have a quick look at your resume i've got it off my screen now so jb um for those of you at home who haven't really you know sort of looked into jb's career well you're gonna be surprised you're gonna be surprised the voice direction he's done the voices he's done it's absolutely amazing he is voice director for the likes of lego dc supervillains lego dimensions fortnite mafia 3 call of duty vanguard and overwatch that's just the video games that he's done um he has voice acted in cartoons such as beware the batman where he voiced alfred pennyworth he was ansel ambrosi in rescue bots colander mary jim and vic in be cool scooby-doo red ghost in hulk and the agents of smash benson in all hail king julian um, and he's also been in cartoons and animes such as Scooby-Doo and Guess Who, Arcane, Pickle and Peanut, The Owl House, Bleach, Digimon Fusion, Marvel Anime, Naruto, Persona 4. And he's also actually in Lego Scooby-Doo Haunted Hollywood. So you've, done, you've, you've dabbled in the world of Scooby-Doo a little bit, haven't you? I have, I have dabbled, yeah. I did, I did. They say that you've made it in voiceover when you get to be the guy that says, and I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you meddling kids. And I and I actually managed to do that. I finally got that got oh. that, that part. Oh, yeah, so I think that just that long list of jobs just means I'm old. 
<laughs> oh, I haven't seen that. I just saw you were legendary, to be fair. Honestly, no, that, that that's not even like halfway through the list I've got. Video games, you have done, uh, you voiced Bane in Batman Arkham Origins, um, Dr. Vinderman and Moore in Fortnite, Bane the Penguin, Razagul, and Solovar in DC, Lego DC Super Villains, Spy Rise for the Skylanders franchise, and also you've done games such as Arkham Knight, Assassin's Creed Revelations, Assassin's Creed Liberation, World of Warcraft franchise, the Uncharted franchise, Apex Legends, Minecraft Story Mode, and also the live action work for films like Garfield 2 which is probably the earliest work that I've seen you in 102 Dalmatians and what's been in TV shows such as Best Call Saul Breaking Bad and so much more <laughs> Um, that's JB Black everybody <laughs> oh my this has been a great talk thanks so much bye <laughs> yeah, yeah just gonna stop it now um yeah. i gotta ask right jamie uh, honestly yeah. there's i don't know where to start with you um like you've got such an amazing career so far you've, you've built it up so well so i guess we're just gonna start all the way at the beginning of course you were you were a theater actor you were born in france um uh and you moved over to west yorkshire i believe harrogate's in, no no harrogate's not east yorkshire no. <laughs> North, North Yorkshire. North, North Yorkshire. Yorkshire. That's 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 me and my geography. The really beautiful one. Yeah, 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 exactly. And what is JB short for again? JB is it's Jean Benoit. So when, when Jean the, Benoit. Jean blank. Benoit Blanc. Like Jean Claude or Jean Paul. Yeah, um, Jean Benoit Blanc. My mother was yeah. a romantic and I think she found it in some sort of romantic novel and thought it was a nice it's it's actually in in, in France it's a kind of a bit of a kind of fancy old fashioned name, a bit like sort of Archibald or you know Arthur yeah it's a bit yeah and, and, but so French people kind of laugh at it but I, when I came to England everyone went well I'm not going to try and say that they, they just they just called me JB from about the age of four or five and ah. it just stuck. Ah, all right so um so that sort of like you you had um your thing in the uk you're a theater actor uh essentially like myself because I, I studied uh, theater, theater, theatrical um like performing arts at uh, college um and then what exactly made you sort of make that big move to los angeles after that uh, well, you know, I've been plugging away at theatre, and I, I ended up um, doing some regional theatre. I worked in Stoke and places like that, and, and uh, which is a magical community theatre up there. It's a fantastic place, um, and uh, uh, and I ended up at the National Theatre for three and a half years, doing about five, I think, I did four or five shows there, working with some amazing directors and some extraordinary actors. But I was, I, I just couldn't, I couldn't really, I couldn't really pay my rent. Even though I was working at the sort of top end of theatre, I'd been to RADA and had a great training and, you know, had all this kind of stuff behind me. But I, I was it's very hard to make ends meet in theatre. And then and I got kind of disillusioned and, and quit. Stopped acting for two and a half years. A friend of mine had a web design company and I went and worked for them. Mm -hmm. And I sort of became accounts director and they'd offered me a nice car and a salary. And, I was, and like a fool, I sort of said yes. And then I realized after two and a half years that I was miserable. It wasn't what I wanted to do. It wasn't my life. It wasn't what I, the, the path I'd sort of sought out for myself. And it's just, you know, a lesson in life that you can start again, whatever stage of life you're in. And I have many times. But um, I came home from the office one day and I, I tell the story a lot, but I was I was I was pretty disillusioned. And I was I was like, what, what am I going to do? I've lost my agents. I've lost my contacts. I don't know what I'm going to do. I've, I've lost my passion for life because I, you know, I had a lot of passion as an actor. And the phone rang and I picked it up and I was like, hello. And hi can i speak to jb yeah speaking she said hi it's, it's priscilla john and priscilla john is a very big casting director in the uk she said are you still working and i went yeah yeah why hadn't worked in two and a half years mm -hmm. she goes there's this movie the count of monte cristo the director's coming into town there might be some stuff in there for you do you want to do you want to meet him after i'd bitten her arm off uh, i met kevin reynolds and we got on like a house on fire and he was like i'm gonna put you in my movie um he doesn't talk like that um <laughs> he, he's from texas and very dry um ah. and so uh, and so uh and so we shot that in ireland and malta and, and it had like i got guy pierce and james frayne and, and richard harris in it which was a lot of fun and then when that was coming out he was like i think you should come to la and, and have a look and see what you think and so i went over and i stayed with him and um with his assistant and uh and just sort of had a look around and, and, and I'd call people up and say, I'm in this movie, The Count of Monte Cristo, and they'd say, can I take you out to lunch? And that was a very different feel to, to London. London was a very competitive, small market, and America is a very big market. It's also, in London, I sort of felt like I was 
part of a lottery, you know, sort of threw the dice, and if they fell right, I happened to get a job. I was lucky, and I, f I and I almost owed someone for giving me that job. Whereas in America, it's very much a profession, and and if you understand yourself as a marketing proposition, you have more control over your career. Mm -hmm. You've got to be smart. I'm glad I didn't come when I was young and naive and, and didn't know anything from anything because I think it would have chewed me up and spat me out. But I was a bit older and a bit uglier. I was in, I was in my 30s, I think, when I came, early 30s. Mm -hmm. um, and I just found it to be a very productive environment with a lot of professional people around who really wanted to do good work. And 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 video games were a complete mystery to me. I hadn't really I didn't really know much about them. I mean, you know, I played Pong as a kid, and that was that's you know, we, I was there before before any of this happened, and so it was a kind of new medium. But it was an incredible medium because the stories and the images and the animation and the backdrops and everything was so vivid and beautiful and extraordinary, and it felt like we were breaking new ground. And and performance started to become very important in video games, and so I just kind of I arrived in town the same time as Troy Baker and Travis Willingham and, and, and Laura Bailey and that bunch of reprobates, Sam Regal, all the, you know, those dreadful people from Critical Role. Awful people. Awful, <laughs> awful people. Please give me a job in your show. Um, they, uh, they, uh, they, you know, who are all still, still very good friends of mine. I mean, I, I remember doing a session and there was this tall blonde guy next to me and he was like, who are you? You're pretty good. And I was like, oh, I'm JB. I just got here. And he went, oh, I'm Troy. I just arrived from, from Texas. And, and I... there he is. I met and, him. <laughs> uh, and he said, listen, uh, do you know this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy? And I was like, no, I don't know any of them. He, she went, he went I'll, I'll, I'll introduce you to all of them. And so Troy was Troy gave me a huge lift right at the beginning of my career. Oh, wow. Uh, and I don't think the industry has ever forgiven him for it. He is but, such uh, a lovely guy. Yeah, I met yeah, him. Yeah, it was great. He was yeah. lovely. And, you know, he's a, he's a fierce talent and a, and a, and a, and a good friend and, and he, he, uh, he gave me a good leg up at the beginning. And then, then you've got to seize the opportunities that you have and, and run with them. You know, that's, yeah. that's the next trick is maintaining it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And then you've gone on to work on, uh, like video games, of course, and like different, uh, animated series and films and live action and stuff. I know you did some live action stuff after you moved to LA. Um, so that's kind of what I want to talk about next. Um, I know you did 102 Dalmatians and whereabouts, whereabouts did you film that? Was, was that in LA or was that in London? I think that was, I think we filmed that back in London. I think I filmed it back on a, on a kind of trip over, um, this is the part where I've got to be slightly careful because as a theatrical actor, I am on strike and I'm not allowed to promote oh, it. Oh, yes. But I think yes. 102 Dalmatians is so long ago and, and so weak, but I don't even, I think I only, my, I think my nose remained on film. I think most of it was cut. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, and so uh, uh, it was, uh, it was a long time ago. It was, <laughs> I was playing like a French police captain or something, but it was great yeah. to hang out with Gerard Depardieu and Glenn Close for the day. They were great. Oh wow, that's so cool. Um, so you've done Garfield too as well. I'm not sure, like, if if we if, if you can't really discuss any of these, that's completely okay. We can move on, and you come back on my show at a later it's date. And unfortunate then because of the strike, I'm just not allowed yeah. to talk about a lot of that stuff that's under that. Contract. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I'll tell you what. I've been very lucky to do a a number of, of really fun shows. Stuff that I used to watch as a kid. Some of it. I mean, I can think I can safely say that my first TV gig was NYPD Blue. Which Ooh. I was in an episode of their last season, and that's when I used to come home from college, you know, after after the pub, and we used to watch it late at night before we went to bed, because uh, it was a great, you know, good solid hour long drama show. Ooh. Um, wow. So yeah, so I fell into sort of some some telly stuff and some game stuff consecutively, and then a few movies along the way, and I've been I've been very lucky, and I've I've been on some, I've been I've been lucky enough to be in some great shows. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'll tell you what, um, you are more than welcome to come back on my show for part two at a future date uh, when the strikes have been resolved and, you know, everything is like, oh, that sort of stuff has been resolved and everyone's, you know, gotten sure. like fair pay and everything. It's all fair for everybody. And we can to. discuss more about your live action work, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Sweet, wonderful. Um, so I was going to, oh, yes, yes, I was going to ask you. Um, so what age did you move from Paris to the UK, may I ask? I think I was three or four. Yeah, very three or four. Young. Okay, okay. It was the seventies, and I had to not be, I had to not be a foreigner because, because, you know, it was a different place in the UK in the seventies, especially up north. They didn't have many brown people or black people around. Um, yeah, and I was brown. Mm -hmm. I was kind of brown coming from France. Even then, I was considered, you know, um, yeah, very different. And so I had, I had a tough time as a kid, but mm. I think a lot of actors did. Yeah. 
yeah definitely I'll either like they had a hard upbringing or they were bullied or anything along those lines it's sort of but then like it sort of stabilizes as you get older like it kind of did for, for sure. me yeah, yeah definitely the reason why I asked you um is because I always ask this to any British voice actor I have on my podcast whether they're from America or they're from Britain because I have had a few British voice actors on my show that live in America and mm-hmm. you know have gained like uh, Samantha Newark it was Gem mm-hmm. and Gem of the Holograms and Neil Ross who's a famous cartoon voice actor both of them were born in England but moved to the US at young age so they now have American accents right. so you know what I ask them is um what children's shows did you grow up, grow up watching back in the day and of course this would have been the 70s for you so this would have been yeah, the was, age we're, of we're talking early days but it was definitely Scooby-Doo the, the Flintstones um uh, the Jetsons, uh, mm-hmm. um, the Wacky Racers. I was a huge fan of the Wacky Racers because I just loved all the ridiculous characters and 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 Dastardly and Mutley was Dastardly was such a great villain. Mutley, um, that was that was a lot of fun. And then you know I I was quite a but I was quite a kind of adult kid. I like things like Tomorrow's World and science programs and. Um, and I'm, and then I've always been a huge like Formula One fan, so I was always addicted to that stuff. But the the, the yeah. Saturday morning cartoons, He Man, when I was allowed to watch them, we were very restricted. My mum was very strict about TV. Uh-huh. I often felt like all my mates knew much more about cartoons than I did. Uh, but those were some of the ones that I absolutely loved. Um, oh, that's really cool. Lot, yeah. And that kind of brings us on to our next topic because a few years later, you actually did work on a skew. <laughs> I just said you just worked on a Skew Fooby Doo project. A Skew, a skew Fooby. Skew, Scooby Doo <laughs> is the lesser known series uh, available on the dark web, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah. No, I did. Yeah. I mean, I, a, I, a few I, Scooby Doo projects. There we go. Let's try saying that three times fast. <laughs> yeah. Show called Beware the Batman that was, that was, that, that was, uh, was, was, was going to go out on Cartoon Network, which tragically only did one season, but it was uh, produced by a guy called Mitch Watson and Mitch very kindly then dragged me across into some Scooby-Doo stuff and some, uh, I did a, a, a lot of the um, uh, All Helking Julian and I've done some, some Kung Fu Panda and stuff like that recently. And that's mm-hmm. that's all been, you know, it's just, if, if you meet a couple of good people, then there's every chance that you'll be brought back as long as you try and do a good job. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, but, but, uh, but they, yeah, I mean, uh, they, they say you haven't made it until you said that I would have got away with it with a, if it hadn't been for the meddling <laughs> kids. And, uh, and I, I finally got the opportunity to be the villain and say that. Yay. Which was great. I think it was in an episode where I had to improvise with Ricky Gervais as well, which was not. Uh, a, a, oh, a so guess who? You were an antiques dealer, I mean, if I remember I was correctly. In that as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you were the Batman, if I, rem- if I recall correctly, was that Andrea Romano who was the voice director on it? The great, the great, the best ever. Love her so much. Oh my yeah. gosh. I literally, uh, right. I don't, a lot of people don't know this because sometimes I don't really talk about my chats that I have that are not recorded. Um, mm. But me and Andrea had a chat the other day oh, and good. she was just so lovely. She gave me she's so great. much advice on my demo and stuff. And she's giving me like all these tips and stuff and like samples and stuff. Obviously, I don't want to get too into detail on film because this is all like sort of like in my sort of career circle. Sure. Um but she was just so lovely and you know i've gotten a few voiceover stuff out and yeah she was just so lovely she's got she's got a big collection of memorabilia like on her wall is literally a superman animated series model sheet with all the villains in a row downstairs she's got that but all the um the superheroes or like the main characters so like yeah. it would be superman clark kent lois lane um jimmy other than like you know just she's just amazing Wow, yeah, she's an amazing woman. She's she's a supremely intelligent woman who who just knows, you know, the industry forwards and backwards, and knows how to tell great stories in animation and and elsewhere. Um, she's the perfect combination of an extraordinarily nice, kind, warm-hearted woman who takes zero shit from anyone. Um, and when you're in a room with Andrea working, you know you're working because she demands it pretty, you know, on the spot, pretty good, pretty quick, pretty sharp. She works very quickly, and you've got to be good. It's I often think that, you know, a lot of your training and your career up until the point where something like that happens is the training for that moment. And therefore, everything you learn along the way is incredibly valuable and, and has to be taken into that room with you. Um, and and it's impressive. It's very impressive to watch her work. I learned a lot as, as, a, as a director from her um, because she's just extraordinarily efficient and very perceptive and very, very... 
uh, sharp on, on, on what she wants and very clear. And uh, as an actor, that's invaluable. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And honestly, like your description of her, your depiction of her is probably the best depiction I've ever heard about her. Like someone describing her essentially, like she takes her shit from anybody that like, she did all the uh, animated DC stuff and she's done stuff with Disney, Nickelodeon, and everything like that. So she is she is a wonderful person, definitely. She's from the Hanna Barbera days. Yeah, yeah, she did. Yeah, she yeah, she was meant. She was mentored under. This is why my nerd's going to kick in. Mentored under the like, Gordon Hunt, and well, you know, like I worked with as well. Yeah, you worked with Gordon Hunt. Yeah, I've been directed a few times by Gordon. Had a had a, lo- a lovely relationship with Gordon. He's a super guy. Another another oh, superman and a, and a a genius. You know. Oh wait, didn't did he do Uncharted? Did he voice directed Uncharted. One of the Uncharted that I worked on with him. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. thought so. Yeah. yeah. What what else did he do? What else are you I've got so many yet? things. I mean, I I can't remember. I didn't do that. And now I can't remember what the game was I worked on him with. That's very embarrassing. Uh, the Uncharted That's one okay. was the big longer. It was a longer experience that I had with him and got to know. Ah. Him that. And another oh, guy who's so just cool. he's just full of love for the for, for for actors and love for what they do. And I think I think that's something that unifies us all is that we're so blessed to be able to do something that we absolutely adore. And and even the rough days don't they're not quite as rough because you know that. You know, it's going to come good again, and 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 the, this too shall pass. Yeah. Um, but uh, under under underlying all of it is this incredible passion and love for what people do, and that's very infectious. You know, you meet people like Kevin Conroy and Jeff Bennett and 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 Mola Marsh and Frank, and uh, you know, all of whom I've had the privilege to work with. It, it, it's extraordinary. It's extraordinary the, the 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 passion they feel, and the passion they feel often is the passion from the fans. You, have I hit your hero's wall here? Yeah, yeah. There's a few of them up there. There's a story <laughs> there. You got Frank Mayer, Frank Mayer, yep. Frank Mayer, Frank Mayer. Um, yeah. Nolan's down here. Kevin's yeah, as well. Here. I, don't, I try not to talk about Nolan North because everyone else does. Not a lot of people mention him on my show from Totally Being Honest. I did an episode <laughs> with him, but like, you know, people, it's always, they always seem to mention Frank. It's because everyone's worked with him. Because well, like, Frank's he, a legend. I mean, and he's been, been doing it since the 60s. <laughs> yeah, the year I was born, 69, was when he first did Scooby Doo. My gosh, well, that's, that's amazing. You know, I know. I'm years old. <laughs> I know. That's amazing. And he's yeah. Still I know. Oh my gosh! I'm just I'm so so proud of him and Jeff Bennett as well. Like uh, another good co-star of his. I haven't yeah. met Jeff or like done an episode of my show with him, but I'd love to in the future. He sounds like Jeff, a really nice Kevin, guy. Michael Richardson, they're all fabulous. They're all just you know, Kevin's Kevin's hilarious. And uh, the the wonderful thing about getting in is in those animation rooms is first of all you kind of go, these are all these massive luminaries. What the hell am I doing here? Um, and and you feel terribly nervous like i don't belong in this space with these people they're they're incredible you know this they're all geniuses and uh and it's very intimidating and then you realize just again the place is full of love they just want you to succeed most people in the industry want you to succeed and yeah. and, and once you get over that hump it's the best thing in the world because you start improvising with these guys and so many of those shows you know it's just what you come up with on the spot but these guys are fast, man. They're really fast and very, very funny. And and you cannot try to compete with them. You just have to do your thing. Yeah. Um, but it's it's kind of scary when you're in when you're in rooms with legends like that. And then you know it's it's bizarre because you know I'm, I'm directing now and I've had people say, oh, I'm, I was very intimidated to be directed by you. And I'm like, why? Well, they're like, well, you've got this long list of stuff. And I said, well, <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm honestly I'm just trying to figure it out like you. I've never been afraid of the words I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll, we, you know, being a director is about solving problems, and yeah. and you get problems thrown at you all day, and so you have to trust that you've got the instinct, the experience, and hopefully the intelligence to tackle those problems and 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 help these actors out the way I've been helped out through a lot of my you know a lot of most of the stuff that I've done. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so just real quick, uh, back to Beware the Batman. Um, of mm. course, I'm literally looking at the cast now. Oh my gosh, like Anthony Rivivar, is that how he says his name? I don't know. Yeah, Rivivar. I thought I was pronouncing it correctly. Um, I sometimes when I, I struggle to pronounce things, I try, but then I'm like, do I try? Or then do I know? I don't know. But uh, Always we got, we, I got I got that. Um, Simali Montano, uh, Brian George, Tara Strong, Greg Lyle, uh, Tara and Gray, I have met in person. Yep. Um, Matt Lillard. Oh my god. That, yeah, Matt, this Matt is... Lillard was in it as well. 
This is just a Robin Atkin Downs. Oh my gosh. Robin, I'm literally yeah. Yeah. Gary Anthony Williams, Colossus Alzraki, Matthew Mercer, James Arnold Taylor, D. Bradley Baker, Jason yeah, Mars. I mean, just a few <laughs> two bit hacks, you know, just a, a couple of a couple of rubbish people trying to put something together. Yeah. No, listen, Andrea Romano was at the helm. She could get anyone she wants in town, you know. It's like you wanna play Rachel Gould, you wanna play this, that, and the other, go for it. You know, we had um Gary Anthony Williams, we had we had you know incredible incredible people incredible people. Um, mm -hmm. We had we also had um, Lance Reddick, who sadly we lost last year. Yeah. Uh, earlier this year, yeah. yeah. Um, who who I was I was directing in a game uh, shortly before he died. We we had dinner plans, but he was he was he played Rachel Gould uh, and was fantastic. He was in The Wire for God's sake, which is one of the greatest shows. Yeah. Ever oh, I said Rachel Gould wrong. I said Ross Gould. I'm like I'm a I'm a hardcore Batman fan. I should know this. <laughs> Must have nerd, a couple of nerd points there. Oh damn it! Um, <laughs> um, I think it's a grey area. There's a lot of people who don't who don't pronounce it like that. But I, I think Talia in an episode of Batman Gould. Beyond didn't like he taught taught Bruce how to pronounce Ray Hargul, and now I know because of you, Jamie. There, you <laughs> there we go. I'll penny with to the rescue. Yay! Um, I was gonna say, what was your um, uh, like recordings? I presume you all recorded together um for the Where the Bad Band. Um, we did. what was it like? What was your chemistry like with Anthony and uh, Sumali? Because essentially they're like the two main characters in the cast aside from yeah. Alfred. So well, like... Sumali I've known for a long time and, and and love her to death. She's a brilliant talent. She's now producing and directing TV shows and stuff. She's really just seized it and gone with it and she's a phenomenal talent one of the most conscientious people one of the most carefully conscientious people i've ever worked with and i just i love her we have a great friendship um anthony i didn't know at all um and mm -hmm. we've been friends ever since and uh, and i love the dude but um i didn't know him at all we were brought in for a chemistry read and it was kind of you know batman you can't really screw with but alfred has been sort of tweaked in different directions over the years and yeah. it's really a sort of a you know sort of pompous old man who's terribly sort of sort of you know proper, yeah. And they wanted to go darker and and make um they wanted to make Alfred a bit more of an ex-military dude, and so we sort of dropped him down here and you know Bruce I can't I can't help you if you won't let me help you, um and 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 that made him that made him more interesting tougher a bit more involved a bit more the guy who trained Batman and create and helped create Batman. And and I love the take on it. I also love the fact that they, the, you know, it was CG, so that makes it it's it's very expensive to fill in backgrounds. The streets look a little empty and stuff, and there was a lot of reaction to that. But I actually think the art style had a really interesting take on things. Yeah. And uh, I think at the time, you know, Green Lantern had been a flop, and Cartoon Network were like, I don't know, young adult animation. It's not our thing right now. Teen Titans Go is going to be much bigger. We're going to drop and uh, drop all those those shows and. It was really sad because I'd seen where the story was going to go, and it was fantastic. And they weren't they weren't using the old traditional villains; they were using new villains, and old villains were going to come in later. And and uh, it's it's one of the great regrets of my career that that show got cancelled because it was so much fun. It was so much fun to do, and, and you know, working with Andre every every episode was was a privilege, just an honour. You know, you were cancelled before it could even start. I'm sure the show had like so much potential. We've got well. one season out. Well, there's one season on floating Cartoon around on the internet. Yeah, it was on Cartoon Network, if I remember yeah. correctly. I think it might have yeah, aired in the while, UK. And then, and then they sort of, you know, they just put it up on the web, and it kind of died. But it's still, you can still find it out there. It's, it's something like, I was like ten or fifteen year anniversary of it recently, when we were celebrating on Twitter. Oh my gosh! Yeah, tenth anniversary of Beware the Batman. Is it ten years since two thousand and thirteen? I'm afraid so. Oh my gosh! I feel. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel old and I'm only 19. <laughs> <laughs> the first concert I went to was the police. Think how I feel. <laughs> oh, wow. I've never been to a concert. No, no, I have. I have. I need to stop saying that I've never been to a concert. I went to a Weird Al Yankovic concert and my friend go. got me... That's a concert. Uh, my friend got me a signed poster of him as a gift for Brilliant. my birthday. I'm like, Great. cool. <laughs> okay, so we've I've just found um, some signed photos that um, JB sent me. One of them's from the funny... Saul Goodman show, and um, I've got to be careful. I would try here. Um, and the other one is, <laughs> yeah, I got to be careful. I'm not a part of you the union, but it, I can't. I know, but if I mention it, then it might jeopardize jeopardize my chance of joining the union in the future. Because oh. they said something about if you don't think it, you won't be able to join it. I'm like, um, okay. Um, but beautiful arcane signed picture. Um, there's a funny that a, story that a, behind. That was an amazing show to work on. 
Yeah, definitely. I've seen I've seen a little bit of it, and honestly, the art style is amazing. It's out yeah. of this world. Um, so there's a funny story behind these signed pictures, um, and um, I'd like to deny everything. It's not true. <laughs> um, so would you like me to tell the story, JB, or would you like to tell the story of story. how? Okay. Um, so basically, JB was advertised as going to Comic Con Scotland last October in Edinburgh. So this would have been the same event where I met Frank Welker and Peter Cullen, and I had all that fun and stuff like that. But the one thing they didn't do is that they did not they did not put on social media that JB had cancelled. I'd had to, yeah. I had work I couldn't avoid. You had work, so it was due to work commitments. But the thing is, yeah, and the thing it's just the thing is, they didn't even say. You were, it said in July, oh, we've got so many video game actors, and you were listed as one of them. They never put on Facebook, oh, yes, due to work commitments, JB Blank can no longer attend the event. Yeah, I gotta tell you, I was pretty pissed off about that because there was a lot of disappointed people, and I got a lot of messages, and I felt I, I feel really bad because you want to represent yourself in a certain way. Bad. That's not really me to do that, and I would have I would have let everyone know. I tried to let everyone know on my social media stuff, but they didn't they mm-hmm. didn't follow up, and there uh, a bit of a drop ball on their part. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's okay. It's not your fault. Uh, so I did speak to Carlos Ferrer, who was at the event, and he was mm-hmm. very lovely as well. So he was like, so he explained what was going on, and I reached out to you, and then of course I got the signed photos from you. So I just wanted to thank you for that, JB. And I have no, I haven't no probably gotten to thank you yet. No problem. No problem. It was really good event, though. Honestly, I mean, Frank and Peter Cullen were absolutely amazing. I think you and Frank meeting would have been absolutely just amazing. When was the last time you saw Frank? Was it? Did you meet him when you were working on Scooby Doo? Uh, I, I met him when I was working on Scooby Doo, and just took an instant liking to the man. I've got a lovely picture with him. And uh, um, really, yeah. Um, and then we, we, you just sort of run into people in studios. Less so since the pandemic started. I haven't seen many people since the pandemic. Um, because we've been all been sort of, we were all locked away for so long and then it's kind of you know the directing from home is kind of stuck I don't really go into studios much unless I'm doing voice work now um, and some of that I, I still do in my home studio so uh, it sort of changed a bit so I ha- you don't see people as, as, as often but I used to run into Frank all the time and, and always lovely gracious warm friendly an absolute sweetheart just uh, and, and someone who doesn't really caught publicity very much you know it's he's hard to get to do an interview and he doesn't do articles and stuff and he's he's incredibly humble and and it's a big lesson to all of us i think definitely needs to try and do a show he did do a podcast in 2021 but i'm not sure i asked i asked the guy who was doing it how did you get him and it was like seven years of many phone calls and much pres- preservance is that I got my perseverance. 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 Yes, yeah. yeah. So I'm um, probably probably might have to wait a few years, but I think it would be lovely just to have him here. Not really like sort of an interview, hardcore interview, just shoot but just the shit with him. Yeah, just shoot. yeah, just shoot the shit with him. Just like uh, chat most about his career because every time we video chatted through like GalaxyCon, um, I I know people would ask him, "Oh, can you do the voice of Fred Jones for me, please?" Or what was it like voicing Megatron? I wasn't able to get to do any of that because we would just have casual chit chat. He would usually be like, "Oh, how are things in the UK? Are you staying safe? How's the uh, how's the weather over there?" And like, I'd show him my, my little merchandise and stuff. Yeah, I think he only did one character voice for me out of all the three video chats we had. The rest of us was just talking about, "Oh, when are we going to see each other again? Or oh, when are you flying over here? When are you coming to America? Oh, when are you coming to America?" And like, just he's just so humble. I love him so much. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, actually, I've got a lovely little story to tell. Um, do you know who Susan Blue is? Yeah, of course. Of course. Well, I, you can't really see it's in a little folder on my wardrobe. You can't really see it also because of like the light on my blinds. But there is a picture here of me and Sue. But the reason why you can't really see it is because it's signed. That's oh, why nice. it's like sort of like a Polly Pocket thing. Um, so I know we I know that they're, they're they're not really called Polly Pockets, but that's just what my family call them. Um, so I met Sue; she was really lovely, and I think like after because uh, she did two panels because this was a Transformers convention, and you did work on Transformers, uh, which we'll get to after the story. Um, so I, I went to the first panel that she did on the second day. Um, and I went up to her afterwards. Well, first of all, she recognised me at a table, which was just amazing. She was just so lovely. She was introducing me to like everyone and like her wife and everyone like that. Um, so I was like, oh yeah, um, I'm gonna head 
to the bar for the night, you know, because it was around the time the convention was shutting up for the day. And I said, don't forget to tell Frank I said hello. And then she says, oh, actually, Frank wanted to say hi to you and your dad. I'm like, what? Uh, what? And then she's like, yeah, I spoke to him last week and I mentioned that I was meeting you. And he said, he said, he said, say hi to Amber and, and her dad for me. I'm like, I, st- I nearly, is, burst, that, I nearly burst into is. tears. That's who and, he is. That's who and he is, and it's all genuine and right from the heart. He's an amazing human being. And then, he's, and then he was like, "I mentioned something about a Bill Scott documentary you did." I was like, mm, "Yes, yes." Um, and what that was referenced to is in 2021, I released a documentary about the voice actor Bill Scott. He passed away in the mid 80s, yeah. but like Frank worked with him, and I kind of got him to help on my project. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so um, he absolutely loved it. I keep the uh, the little message that he sent me after he watched it on my wardrobe. Um, so yeah, he was just, I didn't expect him to mention it to see because Sue never worked with Bill, so I didn't really approach her for the documentary, but now she wants to see it, so I sent her the link. And, yeah. Right. That's all happy yeah, ending. Too. I'd love to see it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, just to warn you, it is two hours long, so right. you can either watch your own pace or just watch it in one sitting. <laughs> I know I'm doing a part two, which will be out probably later in the year, but it won't be as long. It'll probably need about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, but it is detailing more stuff that I did not I mean, mention the one, initially. The, the other thing is that's the wonderful thing about about the voiceover world, because, you know, on camera, I think a lot of people have a lot more to protect. And so it can be a bit more vicious and a bit more kind of backstabby. And, and there's really, I mean, I've encountered a couple of episodes of that really over the years, but really in voiceover, it doesn't happen at all. Everyone's incredibly supportive. They know how hard it is. Until you've been a, in a booth and really had to tackle some problems, it's very difficult to understand just how much goes into doing voices for games and stuff. You know, you do a four hour session on a game and you come out and you're pre, you should be pretty pretty much knees on the floor. You're pretty exhausted. Oh, it's yeah. tough stuff. Um, yeah, and it's very intensive, and I think um, I think there's an understanding amongst the sort of brotherhood and sisterhood of, of voice acting that that um, the job's hard enough, and that there are, the cream will rise to the top if you're a nice person and you work hard. And I think that's you know it's a good thing for everyone to take through their career. Yeah, I think. yeah definitely, indeed. Uh, so you did Transformers. You were you are a part of the Transformers universe. You were in an episode of Rescue Bots a few years back. So what yeah. was it like doing that? Because I believe they all recorded together um, for sessions. Yeah, well, I don't know if I, I it, you know, it's really hard to remember, you know, which booth was which gig with which j- voice with which job. Um, I have a vague memory of it, but I, I, I can't remember whether we recorded together. I suspect we probably did record together, but um, often with, you know, little minor characters, sometimes you'll do those separately. You'll just be drafted in after yeah. the main cast record because either they've been delayed in their casting process or they haven't got the right person yet or whatever it is. So... Um, I can't specifically remember that gig as as well as I should, but I mean the problem is you see I've just done so much work I just can't remember what I've no I, I'm serious fans tell me what I've done because I can't I can't remember it's so there's just too much stuff and especially nowadays because I'm directing you know I direct everything that Blizzard does so that's that's a load of projects which is like Hearthstone and World of Warcraft Diablo Four uh, 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 Heroes of the Storm and Hearthstone. And then uh, I direct Fortnite still. I, I'm, I've, I've done some directing on League of Legends. Uh, I'm doing a new TV series based on a video game, and uh, uh, and and another new game for another uh, another studio. So that's all going on at the same time as me having a voiceover career. And it, listen, I'm very lucky. It's great. I worked my ass off for it. Um, but uh, you kind of you, your whole life, you're like, God, I just want to be that busy. And then when you're that busy, you're going to go, What the hell happened to my life? <laughs> I, used to, I used to be able to go and meet people for drinks uh, and that, that, a lot of that stuff's gone so so it's uh be careful what you wish for it's uh it, it can if it rains it rains hard um and that's and that's great it is it is all, all i ever wanted and i'm incredibly grateful for it but it does make a it does make interview stuff when people go you did you know kingdom they know your resume more like, than kingdom you do kingdoms of amalur I, I can barely remember it yeah, it's like they know your resume more than you do yourself. Well, it's certainly more creepy in a way, but you know. <laughs> it is a bit spooky, yeah. Well, that's yeah. the run by doing something that's public. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, voice direction. Um, I've got to have now. I've got to ask about this. Uh, you said you were directing uh, Fortnite. Um, may I ask, by any rare chance, were you with um, Elias, um, Tufexis, yeah. 
um yeah. at the the uh the, 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 I can't speak. Um were you with Elias when he voice directed Peter Cullen for Fortnite by any no. chance? No, no, no. Uh yeah, no. Elias takes over when I'm not available. So I've been I I, I get fairly heavily booked up. So Elias has, has become my backup on Fortnite and he's doing a cracking job. Uh, so Ooh, uh, you missed out on Peter Cullen. That session and of course I'm furious. <laughs> uh, I saw him actually. I saw him two days ago at the at the big picket meeting at, uh, on the SAG strike. I, it was great to see him. I hadn't seen him in a long time. Oh wow! Uh, I first directed him, I think, on Fortnite as uh, as a kind of grouchy general. Um, oh and, wow! Uh, and so that's how I met him. And and another one, you know, kind of like um, Darren DePaul, who just sort of arrived in town and and immediately hit the ground running. Uh, I mm. arrived in town. It took me a lot longer to get going than it did them. <laughs> 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 Both supremely talented and just and just have, 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 have been killing it ever since they arrived. So I love him. He's a super nice guy, super a good family man, and just a, a lovely fella. That's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. And for LEGO DC Super Villains, literally, I'm looking at the behind the voice actors page for it now, and I was playing it the other day with my brother. What a cast. I mean, you voice acted in it yourself, which is which yeah. is quite cool. Um just I'm just literally just looking at the cast. It was Liam O'Brien uh, and Chris Fiella. I believe. Yep. Chris, Fyler, um, Chris Fyler, I think, directed most of that. I didn't direct that one. Liam O'Brien. It says you and Chris were assistant voice directors and the voice direction was mainly done Very by possible. Liam O'Brien. That is yeah, so... Yeah. But just looking at the cast, just like so many familiar faces I have either met in person or I've had on my show. So Kevin Conroy, Josh Keaton, Susan Eisenberg, uh, Tara Strong, yeah. uh, Nolan North, Jason Marsden, Wally Winger, Lex Lang. Um, oh my God. I'm literally still scrolling through because there's so many people. Steve Bloom, Fred yeah. Tadashaw. Yeah. Oh my God. Lauren Tom, Leanne Shermer. Oh, I love Leanne. She was really lovely because she was uh, Renee Montoya in the new Batman adventure. So she pretty much reprised her role for the video game. That's she was right. the second voice. Um, right. Oh man, I've, that's just no, reminded you know, me. But you know, the best part is that I'm proud to call all of those people friends still. That we've all been friends for years, and and, and you know when we see each other, it's all big hugs, and mm. uh, it's it, it's a really warm family. Oh, it just reminded me, I need to reach out to Leanne um, and talk to her about um, when I come over to LA because I was like to her, oh yeah, I need to. Um, I need, I need to meet you when I come over to LA because I said this to her. Where, no, I remember, right? I said this to Ingrid Oliu, right? All, just two of us. Like, so it'd be the two Renees and me. We were going to have like lunch out in LA. We had it planned with Andrea Romano as well. And they said, we will make it happen. I need to follow up with them. Oh my gosh. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you for no, letting much, me go through yeah, the castle. Yeah, yeah. People really do value that. So yeah, if they've, if they've made the offer, take them up on it. Yeah, yeah, of course. It was there. David Sobolov. I met him at the same con I met Sue at. It was a TF. David, it was David Transformers. Very, David, David, David was very so serious. great. Very serious I'm going to have to send you all these photos because I took so many photos that weekend. It was just <laughs> so lovely. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to find. I'm Corey Burton as well. Did you? Yeah. Oh my God. Did you voice direct him in that or was it Liam or Chris? Don't think I did, Corey. Yeah, no. I think we we, we were doing a lot more minor characters because that's usually what happens nowadays. I'm, I'm ah, often the right. director, and then we have other people do more minor characters as well. Ah, right. If I can do them, I'll do them. But it's all about timing, you know. Ah, okay. The, okay. Sometimes the schedules are nuts, and they've got to get it out as quickly as possible. So you can you can on you know on some projects we've run like five rooms at the same time. Oh my gosh! At Blizzard, wow. yeah. When we've got, if we've got a big deadline for Blizzard, we can have five studios running. That needs five directors, five sets of casting, five sets of everything. So it's it's yeah, it's, it gets a bit nuts. Yeah, and it just get it just gets better from here. You've got Tom Kane, you've got Somali, of course, you've got Jennifer Hale, Jeffrey Combs, Tom Adcox Hernandez. He is absolutely amazing. I'm literally doing a project with him right now. It's like sort of a uh, it's to do with voiceover, but I can't really uh, say much on the subject now because I'm not right. sure if I'm allowed to talk about it in public or not. That's but right. it's like, I it's didn't like... hear anything. Who are you? <laughs> It's like a sort of reanimated project. They're reanimating a show that he was in and he's voiceover. I don't know how it works or like, you know, but it's just leave it at that. Uh, uh, who else is there? Oh my gosh. Uh, John Barrowman, Darren DePaul. Oh my gosh. Roger Craig Smith, Gilbert Gottfried, J.P. Carliac. Wow. Tasha Valenza. Oh my gosh. Misty Lee. I'm literally speaking to her this weekend. Oh, you are? Well, give her yeah, a good friend I too. will do. Yeah, because she's uh, married to Paul Dini, I believe. Yep, or is, uh, that's correct. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's like... They're, it's... they're also one of the craziest, most funny couples I've ever, ever, ever met in my life. Really? 
Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, I'll give you an example. They, they, uh, every year they have Christmas lights put on their house, and they hired someone, and it was an absolute disaster. They couldn't get their money back. It was, it was ridiculously funny what these people tried to get away with, what, with, with the way they decorated. So then Paul was in a big sulk because he's a big Christmas fan, <laughs> and so Misty conceded to letting him to go to go to around all the hardware stores they could in LA and find as many inflatable Christmas ugly massive lawn furniture. <laughs> <laughs> they had a narwhal they had a santa they had a darth vader oh they my had, gosh they just covered the lawn in these giant inflatable, inflatable oh that's brilliant and that's the sort of crazy shit they pull all the time and misty's always behind just going oh god i can't believe this child and paul's just having a ball they're both hilarious and i, I love them to bits do you reckon a week would be enough for me in california or do you think i should extend it to two <laughs> I mean, if you can do it, I would always extend it to two. Yeah, definitely, because sure. because I know the um the the convention I'm going to is three days long, so it will be Which like sort of it? TFCon. Got, it's at the uh, it's at the Marriott in Burbank. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think they're doing like because it's the 40th anniversary this year. No, next year. Sorry, um, <laughs> of Transformers. Apparently, we we don't want to miss the event. They might be getting Peter and Frank. They might be getting all the G1 class back together. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah, but I think it'd be no, great if they invited good. like every single voice actor who was ever voice acted in Transformers who is still here to this day. I think it'd be really cool, no matter if they were in one episode or 10 or 100, you know. Well, they haven't really um, asked me, so I don't know what's going on there. That's oh, they don't, they, don't announce the, they, they don't announce the guests until November, so I think you'll be all right. Fair don't right. worry. Yeah, well, we shall see. Um, <laughs> oh, what was I going to say? I was going to say something about uh, Lego DC Super Villains. Oh, yes. I was going to say because looking at this list, it's just reminded me that there's at least five more people I need to contact about seeing there when I come over to LA. That's how it happens. Oh, yes. And Dave B. Mitchell as well, who was the ventriloquist in Scarface. He was just so amazing. I met him at World's Comic Con, Pilfer Takeover, um, where I met like Rob Paulson and Cam Clark and everyone like that. He was just so. Great. Have you ever considered doing a convention in the... Oh, wait. You've already done a convention. I did two you did... last year. You did Megacon, didn't you? I did Megacon in Manchester, and then I did one in Birmingham. Ah, right. Well, I was going to say. I, 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 I don't, I've I, never been to a Megacon before. The only ones I've been to are the, the standard Comic Con that Monopoly They're do. pretty new, Megacon. They're, it's a new outfit. Yeah. One of the guys who used to work with one of the other companies... Has MCM, yeah. Design. Yeah, Brian. Yeah. And, uh, Irish fellow, very nice guy, and uh, yeah, I had a fun time. It was yeah, it was weird for me doing conventions in the UK because I haven't, you know, I get a lot of fun contacts from from America, and I and I've engaged in in you know, I've been to Sac Anime and stuff like that. Uh, I'm doing an event at PAX West in Seattle at the end of this month, um, but I, but I hadn't really experienced you know British fans as much, and uh, it was really great to meet some people that I'd, I'd been in contact with online and. Um, Okay, it was Manchester and Birmingham, maybe not the most glamorous places in the world. Maybe Manchester is slightly more glamorous than Birmingham. I think we can all agree with that. Where but, was uh, it at Birmingham? Was, uh, I, had a, I had a great time and managed to get all, all my voiceover mates out for a bolty in Birmingham. Oh, so wow. I, I counted that as a success. Where was the one at Birmingham? Was that the was NEC? At the NEC. Oh, yeah. so it's just around the corner from the Hilton, the uh, the double yeah. tree. Uh, what was it? The, 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 it was, it was the B Hilton in Birmingham, just the one near the NEC that TF Nation yeah. was at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. The Metropole. That's what it's called. Can't remember the name then. Um, but yes. Oh my gosh. I've just realised. Like, if I probably would like to meet you when I come out to California. So I'm gonna have to have three course dinner. Well, when I say three course dinner, I mean breakfast, lunch, and dinner, each with a different voice actor every single day Certainly. to make sure I meet everyone. Oh, uh, breakfast with such and such. Of lunch with such and such. Dinner with you, or maybe, and then just like. Go 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 and have a drink later with such and such. It's just oh man, I need to start Maybe writing. I can bring along a surprise now. guest and and surprise you. Oh, that would be exciting. Oh my gosh. Okay, right. I am gonna have to write all this down because I know it's in March and I know people are like, it's six months in advance. Why are you panicking? I'm like, well, I tried to book it once two months in advance and it wouldn't work. So look, I'm panicking now because I got to book flights. I got to book the hotel and just I'm just yeah, excited. Get it done. Get it done. <laughs> I'm just excited. Um. Uh, and enough about my LA uh, shenanigans that I've planned. Um, so let's back to your career, JB. I do, I do wholeheartedly apologise. No, I'm just, okay. I know, but people think, oh, look, you're going off topic. But I, I do go off topic. But you know, it sort of becomes self centered. Be nicer to her. She's great. Oh, bless you. Thank you, JB. Um, so yes, the um, 
the DC Supervillains game, you didn't just voice direct it. You actually were in it. You voiced Bane, the Penguin, Razorgul, and Solovar. So what was it like to sort of be in that video game? Of course, you were Bane in Arkham Origins as well. Um, yeah. So so what was it I've like to sort it. of I've like... I've been lucky enough to do Bane a few times, and uh, I do like him. I was in a Telltale series as well where I did Bane, and... Um uh it, it, it it's always great and and it's always an honor if they can throw you another couple of voices too so if you can bring you know that's why i always i always say to people be as versatile as you possibly can work on accents work on different areas of voice work um but just don't ever do a voice as a character it's always got to be a character who has a voice you've got to start with a, a character who has real wants real needs and then the voice will take care of itself i think a lot of people think you know, I, I quote this an awful lot, probably in every interview I do, where people come up and say, hey, dude, I've been told I get a great voice, I should do voiceover. And I'm like, well, yeah, but I have a really nice pen. That I'm not a writer. And it's kind of the same thing. The voice is the tool, but really it, it comes secondary to the character. And so I think thinking in terms of character well, first, Bane is a very different character to The Wrecker or to whatever it is, or to Hulk or to whatever it might, it might be. Um, and you've got to think in terms of different character sets, and then you'll be a more useful tool to any voice director or production. Yeah, because definitely. they can they can apply you to all kinds of different sized screws, you know. Yeah, definitely. It's more about the acting, more or less, so the voice. Because for me, I've I studied performing arts, so that was mainly like stage based. So it was more sure. or less not doing putting on voices and stuff. It was more or less acting. Really. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's yeah. the thing. I don't like the term voice acting. It's acting. It's just a different form of acting. It's acting, and and the acting has to come first. And 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 I think, you know, to 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 most kids who say I want to be a voice actor, I say, well, be an actor first. Go and get an acting training. I mean, my training. I was lucky. I went to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. I went to RADA. I was very lucky to have that experience. But it's. I think that's the reason I've had such a long career and 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 been able to work in so many different aspects because that training provides that sort of strong foundation for the rest of your work. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it sets it sets the foundation, of course, because like um, with me, it probably would have been most likely like I wouldn't have had any acting training. I would have just gone straight into voiceover without any acting yeah. school. But looking back at it, I have the qualifications now. I did about three years. So I studied mainly like the art of acting and um, I thrived in like uh, my theory work and everything like that, like researching the acting and stuff. And yes, I did kind of sort of revolve around voiceover a little bit but it's mainly just like on the on stage acting and I learned a lot from it and the qualifications you know it can just take me to a sort of better future career wise absolutely maybe. absolutely yeah, definitely. and also you know that's all valuable experience you you have to not run before you can walk um it's like people you know people everyone wants to get a demo and get it out to agents but if that demo isn't tip top if that isn't isn't the you know the very best work you can produce you're wasting your time and you're not giving the best impression of yourself. I'd rather you took a year to work on it, really get it good and get it into a, a, a really finely tuned with someone who knows what they're talking about, can guide you through it um, and then take it to market when it's ready. You, you, it's a difference between having a career that's a few jobs long and and a career that's 40 years long. You know, that's that's the aim, you know, because if yeah. you love what you do, you don't want to stop doing it. No, definitely not. No, um, I was going to say because I have a character demo which did take me a few months to work on because mainly because like I was trying to find the right sort of voices or digging out all the auditions that I had done that I sort of you know I kind of like did my best thing and I made the big mistake of actually producing my own demo and it did not sound great so I ended up getting someone else to Lesson produce learned. it for me. Yeah, definitely. Um, I just better stick to making uh, YouTube podcasts. <laughs> Oh, I'm absolutely sweating. I know you wouldn't think it. Um. Oh, oh yeah, I was going to ask, how are you coping out there with the hurricanes and the earthquakes? Uh, you know, it, I was, it was kind of a nothing burger here. It was, um, we, were, we, we were warned and we battened down the hatches. I mean, people laugh at us because um, it's just a bit of rain, but actually rain is extremely dangerous in California. People don't realise because there's no, it doesn't soak in. It just runs down the street. So you get instant flooding. It's a desert. It's not used to rain at all. So you get a lot of mudslides, a lot of, you know, houses have fallen into the sea with canyons closed, all kinds of stuff. So it's actually quite a big deal. But we were we were lucky. It got very, very wet, um, but we survived. And I didn't feel I didn't even feel the, the earthquake that happened in the middle of it all. <laughs> I, was like, I was just looking up, waiting for the locusts to come and then, <laughs> you know, see what happened. Yeah, yeah. Um, just quickly going back to your daughter. Um, what's your daughter's name again? Is it Malia? 
Malia, yeah. Malia, um, has she grown up with your work in a sort of way? Like, yeah, she's she blissfully ever... ignored most of it, which is great. Oh, <laughs> I don't think it ever really occurred to her. And recently, <laughs> and then she got into she got into some early anime stuff, and then she got into she 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 actually is an artist and wants to design characters for video games. Oh, um, yeah, and she she sort of designs avatars for people and stuff online and stuff. And, and oh uh, wow, she's good. yeah, maybe she could then, design uh, me an avatar. I think I need a new like. Yeah, she does. She'd love to. Yeah, well, in that case, I will get all right on it. I'll, I'll message you after touch. this. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, oh my gosh, this is actually really cool. Um, and uh, and so uh, she, she, yeah, for, for for most of it. I mean, I think a lot of actors' kids just kind of take it uh, with a pinch of salt. It's, and I think one time she's, you know, when people at school found out like I'd done, what was the big one? Well, I guess it was, I guess it was, it was the admin in in Minecraft Story Mode season two. Yeah, um, I was the main villain in that, and I think once you know, because the kids are all we're all crazy about Minecraft. And once oh found, yeah, she actually started going, Dad, are you are you famous? And I was like, Well, I'm not famous, <laughs> but I I do something that that people recognise, <laughs> but it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't. It's just it's all false. It doesn't mean. Just don't get sucked into that. And I think she got that concept pretty quickly, and she's been great. And now she'll, you know, help me sign uh, sign photographs when I do live streams and stuff. And she she oh, came to she cool. came to the Manchester convention with me. Oh, did she? Um, yeah, she was. I mean, she was great. She was just she was my chief wafter. So she'd waft the signatures dry before we handed them over to people. Oh, that's so cool. Which is great. Wow. And, um, she'd never really experienced that. And I said, look, it's going to be a long day, and it's going to be tough because you know, for a lot of people, meeting their voice actor heroes is kind of it gets very emotional there's a lot of, there's a lot of weeping there's a lot of you know particularly with vanda who who to a lot of people was a sort of father figure that some of them hadn't really had and and uh, i think a lot of people sort of related to him very closely mm -hmm. and uh and 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 i don't think she i think it was a shock for her to see the and, and it's a shock for us because you know what we do we do in little black boxes in burbank and places and um and you don't really get an idea of the effect it's going to have my camera's going to do lally again Come on, you stupid thing. Um, you don't really get a sense of the effect it has on people. Come on. There you go. There we um, go. Yeah. Autofocus. Yeah, don't get it. It's a feature. Because <laughs> um, it doesn't auto. All focus. Um, but so, so, yeah, I think she's she's sort of, I'm glad she wasn't sort of aware of it too much as a, as a young kid. But but uh, now we, you know, we laugh together at some of the crazy messages I get and some of the silly stuff that happens. And she she, she gets it a lot more now. All right, well, that's really that's really cool. That's a lovely story to tell, definitely. Um, actually, I've got a really powerful question, uh, to signify as the last question for our chat, if that's right. okay with you. Yeah, we will be back for part two in the future. Um, I just don't know when. <laughs> um, so as a voice director as well as being a voice actor, JB, what is the best recommendation you could give? to vocal warm-ups what was the best vocal warm-up you could recommend or the best way to sort of preserve your voice before or after like a lengthy or strong recording session yeah i mean you know everyone's got their own a lot of people have their own individual thing um i mean i, I learned really good warm-up practices at, at, at rada and and you know warming up for theater is very much you, you know the reason you warm up and uh, as a director you can immediately tell if someone hasn't and i do it in the car on the way to a session uh, it doesn't really matter how or when you do it, but I'm often, you know, giving funny looks in my car as I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, um, it, it, different things work for different people. I think you, you know, avoiding avoiding too much coffee, chocolate, dairy, that kind of stuff all, all helps. Um, learning diaphragmatic breathing is is really key. This is why another reason I say get a training is because you will learn how to breathe. You can go to a singing teacher to learn how to breathe. That will definitely save your voice a lot. And then, you know, there's sessions that are Call of Duty and you can't do anything about it. If you don't scream, you know, you can choose not to do the job um, uh, or you can you can play along and and uh, and, and do the best you can. Um, I think, you know, thinking of the voice of from as, as coming from way down in the bottom of your belly rather than from your throat is a key. Um, learning to have a nice, relaxed neck uh, that will preserve your voice. Keeping that 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 breath to voice. Um, channel open all the time uh and then there are sort of various treatments there's a weird chinese potion that, that fred tattershaw found another very good friend of mine and and um it's called something like nim pom something or other and it's got it's got molasses and chinese herbs in it a lot of people use that to help recover their voice 
Really, the only thing that's going to help you recover your voice is to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Silence is the best cue. Got advice. It Got really advice. Is. So, coming from a voice actor, here's my career recommendation: shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> where Andrea Toys, when we we're doing Blizzard stuff, we uh, we have a chair, and it's called the shut the fuck up chair. And uh, so, if a, if an actor, because we have a lot of people doing orcs and stuff like that, and very kind of vocally stressful stuff. Uh, we make them sit in that chair and shut the fuck up for at least 10 minutes uh, and, and, and giving vocal rest. I think this is something that a lot of people didn't understand, you know, uh, in the industry until fairly recently, just how vocally stressful it can be. And, you know, we've had voice specialists. We did, a, you know, last time we were negotiating our contract and there was a strike, unfortunately. We were trying to, you know, inform the producers just how what, what vocal stress was and no one knew. And we had a we had a, a an ear, ear nose and throat doctor, one of the top people in LA, who specialises in performers' voices. Yeah. And they said we said this is what you do during the course of an average voice uh, session for a video game. What do you recommend to help actors deal with that? And she said you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be doing that with your voice. And we have to. It's our bread and butter. Yeah. So then we had to go about finding ways, you know, that that are relaxation exercises, breathing exercises. Um, phonating, which is where you have a little straw and you blow through it very hard, which opens up the cords, relaxes them, stretches them out, all those little tricks. There's lots of different stuff, lots of different resources you can find. Um, some people gargle lukewarm salt water, gargling it down a scale, um, keeping just keeping yourself healthy, keeping yourself you know in good condition, taking your vitamins. It's all the boring stuff that you know we're all supposed to do for life. Um, but uh, but there are there there you know technique is a lot of it. Um, and then there are some gigs where technique's not going to matter at all. It's, it's going to blow you out. And the only thing you can do is STFU. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to start using that tactic now. Oh, my gosh. Like, this is just going to be my STFU chair. <laughs> <laughs> Tricky yeah, definitely. Well, JB, thank you so much for appearing on my pleasure. show. It's been great to talk to you. Oh, my gosh. It's been great to become acquainted with you. Um, where can we find you on social media? Uh, I'm on the X Twitter uh, uh, at the JB Blanc. I'm on Instagram at the JB Blanc. Uh, I'm hopefully going to be starting a new TikTok channel, which is a little secret project I'm going to be doing um, fairly soon. I will get details out of that to, on, on my social media, uh, and I'm on Facebook and stuff. And so you can, you can dig around; you'll find me. Sweet. Thank you for watching, everybody. This episode of In Conversation with ATF with JB Blanc. Um, and of course, your host, Amber Jones, ATF, you know, whatever you want to call me. Um, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you around. Take care, everybody. Bye. I need to stop doing that. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and cut.